here we go again. We got another fine specimen. This is a Ward's Riverside Benelli. I believe it's a 250. Um, the well, when you get these project bikes, a lot of them are. By the time they're done, some kid has just rode the crap out of it, and they're pretty much done. Uh, I, uh, at any rate, I recommissioned the engine. Uh, did some, uh, it had the small, tiny rear sprocket. So I, um, had to machine the hub, the rear hub to accept the, the bigger chain ring. That's a 60, 59 or 60 tooth. Anyway, and uh, rebuilt the uh, ignition system. So it's got good spark now. Still doing some of the wiring. I'm waiting on a what it is, is this takes a positive charge from your battery, and this is on the positive side of the battery. This is a battery-operated ignition system, so you have to remember that if you ground it out, it will shut the engine off, but you will burn your battery down because you're creating a short circuit so you have to break the circuit open open the circuit up so eventually i'm going to have a switch up here which will run from uh this wire that's your positive it's going to go up to a main switch which will power this so it'll recharge the battery so it'll, yeah recharge the battery and give you power to your ignition so that'll run and um and it, i don't know it's going to have a led light on it so you know it's on or off this i was i was toying with it but boy it, be really easy to forget this guy <laughs> you know and you try to start it and it's not going to start because your battery's run down it's only a six volt system other things i did is the forks were bent so i bent them back um redid the front brake doesn't look like it but yeah it's better than what it was um Here's the Ward's Riverside Ward's tag. I rerouted the rear brake lever so it goes up instead of below. And the reason for that is it's just it's it's a little more positive. It keeps it out of the way of debris and stuff like that. And yeah, I gotta figure out a muffler for it. It's, I haven't started yet, but I imagine it's gonna be loud. That's the regulator. I put in a new throttle cable, brake cable, clutch cable. It's all new. Yeah. So, right now I'm Fixing up the gas tank. Before I get it started, I gotta stop at the hardware store and get some other things, but yeah, I'm gonna hopefully we'll get this thing running in a little bit. It shouldn't, man, the thing's got a ton of compression. So should be fine. As luck would have it.
We're gonna go with this. The reason I want to do this is because you go to a track and you can adjust your. This is a 65. I got a 60. And I also have a 58. And I got a bunch more. I just gotta find them. But at any rate, we're taking this apart. Do not lose these bolts and nuts. Because they are fitted to these hubs. And, uh, yeah, this is only like a 12 tooth. Yeah, those are important bolts or nuts. Don't lose them. Because they only fit in this configuration. And that's for your the rubber bumper that's in there for the the uh, drive. So, yeah, the, I don't know. I don't think this is much more than a 20, 20 tooth sprocket. It's just, it's more for road race, road ride, right? Road. Not so much for flat track. And the guy did. His brother told me that he raced it in flat track and he was pretty fast with it, but I don't know. <laughs> Just... Yeah, maybe. So, and uh, that way I can swap out gears. These are, uh, wow, well, this one's already wore out, isn't it? <laughs> I got more, but I just need this inside pattern. But at any rate, um, the guy I got this bike from, he, his brother raced it down in Illinois, I guess, on a flat track circuit down there. He said he, he raced at uh, Peoria, and uh, Springfield he raced at. Indiana, he raced it. Ah, boy, this sucks. I just don't. This is an exercise in frustration. Come on, baby. Don't blow me. All right. Da! Turn on a light here. Maybe we can see a little better what's going on. All right. Ah. 
It's just these things have. Just gotta kind of work them off sometimes. There we go. This one's gonna spring out and hit me right in the face, I think. There we go. His bearing usually is locked up. There, it's a little better. But I'm gonna soak it in the parts cleaner, clean that up. Then I'll go to the machine shop. We're gonna cut this out. I gotta remember to bring the sprocket with me. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty much simple process. And I noticed the, when it was running, a rather loud ticking. That is way too much. Let's see what that one is. That's about four to five thousandths on this side. And this one, unlimited. So, not, not a big deal. Um, let's see. What size is that? Fourteen? Thirteen? No, it's a 12. You gotta close that up. Usually I like the bottom of it out first and back it out. I think these are supposed to, this one is supposed to be three thousandths. Hold it. There. I'm just going to lock it in. A lot of times when you tighten that up, it'll actually pull up on your adjuster. So just kind of recheck it. Yeah. 
there. And that's it. That's the adjustment. And yeah, near as much. The reason it's three thousandths because once the engine warms up, that tightens up even more. Um, I don't think this one I set at four to five. And uh, I'm just gonna readjust that one to four. Ah, great. No good straight shot at it. See, it opened up once I tightened that up. And uh, just got to snug her back down a little. There we go. See that? Oh, way better. All right, so this one's at three, this one's at four. So, now, what I like to do is I just like to cycle through. Okay, and then the last one. Okay, that's your intake. This is gonna be your power, no. Intake. Exhaust. Intake. Do it slow and it won't, it shoots past that. Exhaust, intake. See, it's just, it's going past like immediately. All right, we're good. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. You gotta put the cover back on. It's easier from this side. Shit. This is uh, a pretty, it's pretty straightforward. You just got to remember you got to be up on uh, your, your compression power stroke. Keep that in mind, and because you're on the back heel of the cam, bottom heel of the cam, that's pretty much where you want to be, where you want to set it. Anywhere else, it's you're kind of the 
getting the pressure of the cam, your uh, clearances may not be correct. So hopefully, with this adjustment, it'll run better because it wasn't, it was ticking over okay, but it just wasn't running right. And a lot of, uh, I don't know, weird flutter. And uh, trying to figure out why I was doing that. Oh, shoot. Back off. Back off. I just remembered. I just wanted to re-torque the... I just remembered I wanted to re-torque the uh, cylinder head one more time. Just wanted to make sure it was in its proper torque range. Very big bolts it's... or nuts. If they're only, what is it? Twelve mil, thirteen mil. <clears throat> And then the problem. Because these are under the rock. All right, shoot. What I need is a 13 mil crow's foot, and I don't have one. So, this is just going to have to be more or less a, a guesstimate. Which I 
is in order for me to really get this. I'd have to take that off. Wait a minute. That's, yeah. Oh, I'd have to take them off from here and then I'd have to take the rockers off and then be able to tighten, torque that in. But I, I don't want to do that. Let's try this. All right, they're pretty tight. That's pretty tight. All right. Just don't want to give her too much. I mean, give her some, but not too much. Because I got... About 25 pounds on there, which is pretty good. I don't want to go too much more. All right, so we got to put the oiler back in. sure that that boring is in the bottom Never can find my flashlight when I need it. Interesting. It's like those things just disappear on you. Okay, so that's in there. I just want to... Why not just clean this off? The oiling system on this is pretty straightforward. It's got a little oil ports that come out and spray over each of these, which is kind of cool. I just want to put a little bit of Teflon seal on.
really not overly technical, but the best push rod technology money can buy, I guess. Go. There. I want to make sure that the holes are not missing these little cup receivers. I think that's pretty good. Everything looks tight. These are tight. Yep. Just snug them down. There. That's good. Okay. Now we can put the cover back on. Base on the cover. Right now, I'm kind of in a. This is a, a UB24, but what this engine requires is an S, an SS Delorto. UV24 is just a little too too small and uh, the one it requires is an SS29 carb but I, I don't know I was looking at alternatives too there are some alternatives in the old in the great Amazon world of alternative carburetors and uh, you're looking at that but uh, yeah Ward's when they spec these bikes out they were they came with the bare minimum and uh, just not the best specked out bike. The engine is pretty good. These, uh, these engines went on Mojave's. Um, Sprints, Scrambler, and a couple other names. But, yeah. These bikes were, they were imported quite heavily in the mid 60s to catch the motorcycling craze of the 60s. And I uh, imagine Ward sold quite a few of them considering I think they were only retail for like 490 bucks, you know. Cheap transportation. The first, I think it was the first gas crisis that hit us in the mid 60s. Oh, oh dear, the fuel prices went up to 68 cents a gallon. By today's standards, that's not a fuel crisis. But, 
you know, that's when a lot of these, you know, that's when a lot of the, they were importing tons of British imps, um, just everything, you name it, they were in the early, late, late 50s, early 60s, they were importing all kinds of interesting vehicles. All right. Try and get this thing running.